The financial reports for the month of October. Right. Uh, everyone received them last week and they were put up onto the website. So it's the 10th month of the year. The target is 83.33%. Um, when you review the attached revenue report, you can see the differences in revenue from 2017 to 2018. The 2018 revenue is less than the 2017 revenue by $125,538. The month's total income was $768,919. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $331,586. Interest <coughs> on taxes came in at $5,913. Building permits at $25,304. Highway subsidy at $95,929. State water pollution control at 95723 Miscellaneous state grants and reimbursements at 56735 That's for the loan forgiveness for the um, asset management software. The majority of that is. Right. Departmental income at $61,084. Parking lot income at $4,598. That was for the final shows that they had. The total parking lot income for 2018 was $557,015. That includes the summer leases and the few winter ones that we've had so far. Other revenues are at $6,146, and the real estate trust is at $84,699. On the expense side of things, you will find that we are 84.8% spent or or over budget by three hundred and sixty two thousand one hundred and seventy two dollars or one point four seven percent in october of seventeen we were under budget by five hundred and seventy six thousand two hundred and seventy five or two point three three percent and i just will note there that we're in the process of um going through all of our open purchase orders and all of those items to Find any savings that we can to help offset that um, over expenditure there. General government is over target by $37,165. <coughs> Police is over target by $8,088. <coughs> Fire is over target by $39,791. Building and code is under target by $57,058. Emergency management is over budget by $855. Hydrants are over budget by $22,307. Street lighting is under the target by $2,400. Public works is over target by $189,897. Animal control is under target by $3,947. Mosquito control is over target but should end the, end the year under budget, or on budget or under. I assume they're pretty much done with, um, we might have an invoice or so outstanding, but welfare is under target by 9,375. Recreation is under target by 8,505. Library is over target by 14,685. And the conservation is under target by $631. Fund 24, the Recreation Fund, has a balance of $191,536, which includes beach sticker donations of $19,786 and $13,828 being awarded in scholarships. Fund 25, the Cable Committee, has a balance of $284,745. <laughs> Fund 26 to private detail has a balance of $203,396. And Fund 27, the EMS, has a balance of $389,242. Wastewater system development charge, the fees collected in 2018, total 44392 with a balance in this account of $227,992. The fees collected to date uh, um, since the fund was created total $423,819. And the board has also approved expenditures from this fund totaling $89,376. So the adjusted balance would be $138,616. Okay, questions for Christy. Um, Christy, what 
You said the hydrants are over budget. What, why, or how much over budget? They were over by 22,000, I believe. 22,307. 22, yeah. Huh. And we pay semi-annual payments, so we've made both payments. So that's where that should end the year, as far as I know. And they are budget, in the 18 budgeted, they were budgeted at what they were in 17, because that's the only figures we had at that time. Right. Uh, so. And what and the, the charges were applied to that account. Uh huh. So that's that's where your increase comes from, the wicked charges. So we still need to take a look at that. Well, we don't know what those charges are until the right. end of the year. Right. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Anything else? No, I'm not at the moment. Regina. Um, yeah, I have a couple questions. <clears throat> so. On the expense, we're over, right now we're over budget by three hundred sixty-two thousand. Okay. Yeah. But actually, income revenue is not too off. It was only off Correct. by about one hundred twenty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. So that's clearly mostly on the expense side. Yes. You think? I mean, technically, this budget is the seventeen budget because last year was a default budget. So Correct. we made no adjustments for a year of inflation or what have you. So um, I wanted to say that. On the parking revenue, I see that we're at 557000 which is good. That's well above the 500000 that we usually write around, right? Yes, um, in 17 parking lots, I think, we're at... I mean, I don't need the number, but what I, what I, the question I have about that is, where is the parking, if I wanted to look at what the total parking costs were as a 1031? I'd like to hear the number. Uh, let's see. So parking lot, if you look at, okay, um, let's see. The actuals for 2018 for the parking lot revenues for the, like, the daily lots right. um, down at the beach in the summer is $503,019. And in 2017, at the end of October, it was $492,843. Just okay. for the daily lots. And That's then close. my number was higher because of the fact that I also included the summer leases. Right. And then we've had a couple of winter leases, too. Um, in 2018, we have $1,205 in winter leases. And in 2017, we only had $100. Um, we have a few more leases, the winter leases this year, than we had um, in 17. And then the parking lot the summer leases for 2018 totaled fifty two thousand seven hundred ninety one dollars for this year and in 2017 they were fifty six thousand six hundred forty one for the summer leases that run from march through october i think it's like march 15th to october 15th mm -hmm. or no may 15th i'm sorry not march may 15th to october 15th. So I'm sure as the public's aware this was our first year we transitioned the parking over to the police department for yes efficiency yes. pretty much and for control which I think is very important I'm glad to see the police department doing it I'm glad to see the police department that actively involved down there it's another way for them to be present which I think is very important to Hampton Beach in the summertime but as far as the cost effectiveness of it yet I think that still needs to be determined a little bit I know that right now it still falls under parking and we like to see that move as to some type of a sub line item under the police department as with animal control and things like that. So I know that the assistant town manager and the chief are currently working on, I guess, alternatives that we can make it, like maybe getting some of those machines that mm. would make less people handling the cash, things like that, yeah. that might be able to uh, help with some of the revenue costs. And I know that they'll take anything into consideration that you have to add into that as a finance point of view. But I feel on the budget committee sides of things, why I'm bringing this up tonight is that this is going to be a big issue on what they want to do with that whole section hmm. of parking enforcement and it falling under the police department and the drastic increase to the amount of money that we're going to be putting toward that this year. So I'm not sure if there's any type of like preliminary information we could get over to the committee so that maybe we can let them know that we are, you know, this is the first year. Mm -hmm. I mean, you something's only going to work if you try it. I mean, you're never going to know if you don't try it. So I don't know if that's anything that maybe the chief and assistant town manager and finance director could work on to help me uh, yeah. present it a little more clearly to the budget committee so they don't just 
you, you know, looking? decide that they don't like the idea and they don't want to hear anything more about it. Are you so, looking for money in regards to... Like a comparison, like what, what was the income compared to what was the okay. expense for like, let's say last year and this year. And we know that, okay, we didn't, maybe we didn't get as much revenue as we would have liked to have seen, but I'm sure we've also figured out ways that we can improve the system as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I know working with Christy enough that she usually has, you know, an alternative mm -hmm. idea for anything that gets presented to her. So I'm thinking maybe if we could put some of that together for the budget committee so that they have information that they need if that mm -hmm. is okay by this board. That's why am I bringing it up tonight. That's good. And my other thing that I have, well, I wanted to bring up while the finance director is here and in an appointment with us, is that I attended an NHMA seminar a couple weeks ago with the town manager and with, the, with his assistant, Christina Ostman. And I went to one of the seminars I went to was about uh, NHMA presentation on state aid to municipalities, history, and trends. <laughs> and I'm only going to touch on one point that has to do with heavy finances for the town of Hampton on an annual basis. And what it is is pension costs. Yes. So over the past three years, and I <clears throat> recently by phone verified these numbers with the finance director, the contribution requirement for the town of Hampton for 2015, 16, and 17, so this is three years, is $6,583,144. So that's roughly a little over $2 million every year, direct expense, town of Hampton. That expense, along with a lot of other things, used to partially be offset by reimbursements or funding from the state, however you want to look at it. At one time, at his highest, I believe it was 35%. And one of our representatives, Cushing, has been trying adamantly, and Mike Edgar, I believe, adamantly in trying to reinstate it to at least the 15%. Yeah. So just to give everyone an idea, over the past three years, if our state reps got their bill through, that would have been about $987,000 over $987,000 that the town of Hampton would have gotten back over the course of three years to help offset some of this expense. 20% yeah. would be over 1.3 million. And if they went back to the original 35%, that would be over $2.3 million that we would no longer have to expense from yeah. the Hampton taxpayer. Yeah. So since 2008, things like that, not giving any of that money back to us or helping us afford the cost, and also ceasing the catch-up formula on rooms and meals. And there was one other thing, but this all started happening around the 2008 period, and that was because we had the recession, which makes sense. Yeah. But at the same time, the recession is now over. The economy is in fairly decent shape, and we also experienced the recession, too, right here in Hampton. Yeah. So over that, those 10 years, 11 years, however you want to look at it, that's $700 million Oof. between various things that the state of New Hampshire stopped doing. And that money used to come back to the municipalities per NHMA, per their presentation. And I have the pamphlet right here, and I left some copies with uh, the finance director. If, she, if the budget committee is interested, I think they should take a look at it. And I think when we review the budget this year, we have to keep in mind that management and finance does the best that they can possibly do. But when our revenues are constantly getting yeah. cut from all different angles, all different ways, I mean, what are we going to do? We just can't keep voting for default budgets that are going to give us no room for improvement. Yeah. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Jim? Yeah, obviously, Christy, uh, it's not a good report. I mean, you're only the messenger. <laughs> I'm only the messenger. But it's not a good and it's going to get better. I mean, we're deficit right, right. now. And it, just so everybody understands, you know, the public itself, a town can't end the year in deficit, right? If you do, that comes from that assigned. Yeah. Right, so, I mean, right. it had, the money has to be made up. Yep. Yeah. And I'm sure that you and the town manager have looked at where the budgets that are going over are. Yes. And I, I noticed one myself, and if I'm wrong, let me know. Public Works is 189897897 uh, over, mm -hmm. right? One of those things would be the second leak down at uh, yes. Church we, Street. Yeah, we looked at the, um, we've been looking at a lot of the finer, digging deeper into this, and 
a lot of the overage is related to the um, second break, which was in March in the marsh. That was almost $100,000, I believe, to fix that. And then that, all those storms in March also mm -hmm. contributed to possibly the first in the pipe and then to a lot of the expenditures that are causing us to run over. We had about 75000 I believe, that was related to Bicentennial Park and Place Cove, um, the repairs. But we are seeking FEMA reimbursement for that. However, okay. that most likely the revenue that we will see from FEMA will only come back in 19, not in 18. I don't think that it's possible. We are gathering all of the numbers and we have almost all the figures, but when we were looking at it today, we were looking at roughly between like 100 to 150,000, somewhere in that ballpark, maybe even a little higher coming back from uh, FEMA, it just will cross mm -hmm. over into a new year. So that's unfortunate, but a lot of the expenditures that are the driving factors here are related to those, the two storms in March. One, the first one was all flooding, I believe, and then the second one was a snowstorm that both be, were declared as uh, FEMA disasters that we have been working on seeking reimbursement for, and yeah. both of the projects have been um, declared and approved, we just have to get all the numbers together and yeah. see what's going to be reimbursable and what is not. So, so it's important because in this report, people have the opportunity to go through line by line. You list line by line every expense. Yes. Yeah. Just about. And they, they have the opportunity to go through here to see that it wasn't department heads necessarily not paying attention to what was in their budget, but that it was outside influences that caused the spending to go up Correct. so much. Things that they, that they had to do they had no control over but the important thing is we have a month left two months. a month and a couple of weeks yes yeah yeah we've already looked at it again today and the gap is closed in you know right. not yeah. significantly but it is closing in and we're going through the purchase order um, report and I found some th items there and the police chief asked that I uh, when I was here tonight that I asked the board for permission to remove the final cruiser from the general fund into fund 26. I think he was here like two weeks ago, maybe, Fred? Yes. And he had requested that the second cruiser be moved. And so if the board is willing to do that, that will be another 52,000 that we can move over to the uh, fund 26, which is healthy from the report in front of you. And so yeah. we would ask that he asked on his behalf that I request that of you guys tonight, too. So. And, and I'm um, sure. That, that you and Fred will keep us in tune for the next Yeah, we, I start to do unofficial reports on a weekly basis at this point, especially when it's tight like this. Um, I ran a report this finances this morning, which brought us through last Wednesday. And so I'll do that probably either every Friday or Monday for the remainder of the year yeah. so that we can um, keep close tabs on the situation and where we are, where we are at. Um, we've, Fred had put a freeze on spending a while ago. We've reiterated that to others. However, Mother Nature hasn't been too kind to us so far this year. <laughs> or the end of this year, I guess I should say. Because sometimes we can squeak through with little to no snow. And I think they've had a couple of uh, events down there. Not, nothing major, but I know Public Works has had overtime for snow and everything yeah. already. So there's only so many things that we um, have control over. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I would like to say that some of the things, like Regina said, it's very true that the state has really yeah. clamped up on the money that they've given. Yeah. It's unprecedented all the years I've been here. Um, things like what we're talking, FEMA, there's, uh, which is a federal program. But I think the problem for the state of New Hampshire, um, from what I've visualized all these years I've been here, is that the federal government has stopped giving money to the state. The state gets absolutely no federal funding, and it's happened this way for at least uh, the, the last money that came into New Hampshire, from what I've seen, is the money that came from the Obama stimulus. There was a huge amount of money that came in then, and <clears throat> that money should have gone to roads, but what it went to here in New Hampshire was that was the money that the state gave to the towns. And so since that stimulus money was handed out, mm. which came from that Obama stimulus program, that was money that was given to the towns. Since then, the towns have nothing. got almost nothing. And we knew that this was going to happen. Mm. We've seen it. And now things like FEMA, 
nothing. Things like the Army Corps of Engineers, nothing. New Hampshire is, a, in my opinion, is hurt much more than any of the other states because we don't have taxes, we don't have income tax, you know, the taxes on sales tax, and it's starting to hurt, and we're getting no federal aid, and that is the problem. The whole time I've been here, the, the have when we had storms, we were given the money, weren't we, Mr. Welch? We were, sir. We never had to fight for it or beg for it and only get turned down like what's happened for the last couple of years. And it's really something that people should be paying attention to, but there, you know, a lot of people just don't get, it, don't have any idea of how their loot, their the state of New Hampshire is getting no federal money. They, the only thing I've seen that they've given is for the uh, uh, drug uh, problem, and you know, I think New Hampshire was pretty much crucified for that. Like we're the only one that has that problem. But there just is no money coming in. And it is very visible for anyone that's been sitting here on this board that we have not been getting the money that we were getting year after year, year after year. We were getting percentages of uh, the last one that I can remember where we were offered any money and the town turned it down was uh, when they were going to do the intersection over here near the galley hatch, we were gonna get 25%. I don't even remember, and that was at least three years ago. How many years yeah, ago was that? Was. Oh, more than five. More than five. Yeah. So, you know, the recession's over, money should be flowing in because there's, but instead, I guess it's a big tax, uh, 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 people are getting tax benefits, but now they're gonna pay for it through their town taxes and I tell people every day, get ready for it because your taxes are going up here in Hampton and everywhere else in New Hampshire. No matter what we do, here at this board, we have given, uh, we submitted uh, a budget which we saved money for the town, but instead there's a 4% increase and that can only be expected to be worse in the future unless the federal government makes some changes. The only thing I had to say is, is looking at a couple of these things is one, the, like the fire department budget's over by almost forty thousand dollars. A couple of things there is one, they had some damage from the from the storms, mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. so some of that was in insurance. But other part of it, they've had to take on the cuff, and it was a lot of extra work, a lot of extra overtime. Second thing is, is last summer we we have, we approved him to go over a little bit so we could make sure we maintained nine men during the summer mm -hmm. because yeah. that was something the public asked us to do yeah. right. as a board and that and that's something we did so we got to make sure that you know some of that is, some of this is our our yeah. fault too but we were doing it because that's what the public wanted us to do this another one would have been Anne's Lane yeah. Anne's Lane came in and it was we needed some extra money and we said we've been telling the public that we're gonna do this for a long time we want to get it done that got done so some of that is our own fault, but it's what our constituents have been telling us that they want. So we understand that it, it's been a tough budget year, and the fact is that we are on a default budget, and that's the importance of having a budget every year mm -hmm. uh, for the budget committee. Uh, you know, there, there's not a lot here. Um, I think you've done a great job at trying to control it as best you can, and I'm sure over the next six to eight weeks you're, you're going to make sure that we have it all set and we'll get it as best we can right and but on fire I just want to comment that um, after speaking with the chief today that um, his position will be changing already because of the fact that the grant that he received for the radio yep. and mm -hmm. stuff that whole purchase order is in accounted for in these figures that are in front of you at like 92,000 mm -hmm. but he's only going to be on the hook for 10,000 but we had to issue a purchase order to the vendor right then we're going to get reimbursed so we're going to be moving that around so again that's, so there that's that will put him back into yeah. the mm -hmm. black as opposed to the red if you want to do colors well but um, I just so, want everybody to uh, understand that yes. we, you know part of that was mm -hmm. that we we did that as a board so right. I would like to say too that you just mentioned about Ann's Lane <coughs> and all the other roads and <coughs> These roads probably would have been done with some of that stimulus money if it was handed out like it was in every other state. But the other states used it on their roads, like Massachusetts and stuff like that. But here in New Hampshire, it came back for us to try to help with the schools and things like that. 
the, it, the, the state of New Hampshire used that federal money to uh, make their burden easier because they didn't have the money either. But in the meantime, here in Hampton and all over New Hampshire, we did not get that money for our roads, and now the taxpayers have to pay for it. I just have one more question I wanted to say. Um, I agree. That's I think exactly that we should definitely put more it. of that money back to the roads, that's for sure. One thing we don't focus on in this state is infrastructure. Don't even look at it, mm -hmm. okay? So that's definitely made clear in anything I've seen as a selectman or a layperson. Don't even look at it. Um, but what I did want to point out, which I agree with Rusty also what he said about how we did the Anne's Lane, which was very important. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we put that in there. And I don't think, I think you guys are going to handle it by the end of the year. I have a feeling everything will be fine. But on support services for the police department, I've been tracking this since June of 2018, okay? Every single month I look at Christie's financials and I I do, what, what's the changes? What's changed in this budget? This is out of the total police department budget, which is the 2018 actual budget was almost 4.3 million. We budgeted about 774,000 for support services. This whole section, you know, we have in there the outside agencies for the police that come in from UNH and all that, that the chief can uh, get a hold of to come help us. But in 2000, June of 2018, this account expense was $364,000, 363,843. So for the months of July, August, and September, and I think I put October in there too, that was only about 50,000 for the month of October, we spent out of that same part of the budget more than what we spent for the first six months, Three hundred, almost $387,000. That's a hundred, over 106% of that line item that's been spent all happened in the months of July, August, and September, and October. Now we know what that is from. That's from our police department having to handle everything that happens down that beach. Okay, I realize that the state might not be getting as much money from the federal government. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that a lot of states aren't getting as much money from the federal government as they were 12, 15 years ago. But at the same time, these guys gotta realize that the revenue that is made in Hampton does not just stay in Hampton. In fact, most of it gets taken away from us. So it would be nice in the near future if we could maybe start getting a portion of this, if not the whole entire support services, reimbursed back to us from the state of New Hampshire on an mm. annual basis. So yeah. I just want to I would like to also point out, and I'm sure Mr. Welch can vouch for this, <clears throat> that didn't the state stop giving us um, a share of the room and meals tax uh, they did. That's in that thing I yeah. gave you. Well, yeah, we know that. Yeah. And when they re started giving us some more of the um, room and meals tax, again, it came out of that Obama stimulus program. That's where they got the money to do it. Because other than that, we weren't going to get it at all. So not only was it the schools, but it was they used that money that came in here, and they, they used it for their own uh, to pay the towns in that. So evidently, the state has a lot of problems doing whatever they, that they have to do, and they don't really care about, you know, that it's all put on the backs of the taxpayers, but that's what's happening here. I agree. Hey, Louis? One very quick comment. Uh, when it comes to dealing with the state, if we are inclined to invite representatives from the state to the town of Hampton to have a discussion on Channel 22, they don't want to come. And in fact, I think in my last term, uh, Mr. Griffin, you said they don't want to come because they'll be treated rudely. So with all that's going on with the money and the in Concord, um, we can't even get anyone to sit here like civilized people and talk. Well, I'm sure that they uh, don't want to be attacked either. And I don't blame them. It's not a matter of being attacked. It's a matter of talking it, When we can sense. come to some nice conclusions and they're treated decently, they'll probably come. Hmm. So do we need a motion to on the cruiser? Do you want to? Do 
you want us to make a motion? Last, did they make a motion last time for it to move? Yes, they did. Okay, yes. so I think it would be a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So we need a motion to take the cost of that. Of the cruisers from all three. It was three cruisers total. So it's. I think there's a, a purchase order. The portion that's in the general fund right now is 52000 That covers two. You had already made the motion to remove yeah. one of them, but if we can remove the third one and put them all in fund 26. So okay. Regina says I'll she'll make, make motion. that motion. Jim seconds it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you, Christy. You're welcome. Thank Have you very much. Night.